Okay, uh, Randy says, I think it's Randy. Forgive me if I'm wrong, um, but I'm pretty sure it's Randy Bacon. Anyways, a week ago, you, 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 a week ago, or a week or so ago, excuse me, you mentioned something about not using some function of Google pretending to GMB management or connecting other accounts to your management account. I did not quite understand. Is this the same area if I am managing a client's GMB page? What is the proper way to manage multiple GMB locations? Okay, great question. I'm glad that you asked this because if it was unclear or fuzzy to you, it was likely unclear to others as well. So I'm glad you asked this question. Um, okay, what I was talking about specifically was mainly if you're building lead gen assets, guys. Remember, if you're building lead gen assets, they're spammed. They're black hat locations, assets, right? I mean, let's just let's be real clear about this, guys. <laughs> you know, I, I know people think spam is a bad word and all that, whatever. It is what it is. And that's exactly what we're doing. When you're building lead gen assets that aren't for a real bona fide, genuine business, you're spamming, right? Period. Okay. So that's number one. So when you're doing that, when you're spamming, you got to be real careful about footprint issues because if Google finds out you're spamming in one property, one location, and then can connect the dots between other locations, you could lose them all. And we talk about mitigating risk or reducing exposure all the time. I talk about that, guys. I have gone over and above, way beyond the normal um, protocol for trying to hide footprints when it comes to my business because I have lost a lot of stuff over the years from not being adamant or, or vigilant about hiding footprints. And because of that, and I guys, I hate rework. Like I can't stand, I like building assets that produce for me long-term. I don't like turn and burn. I don't like short-term assets because I, so I've learned over the years to take extra precautions to eliminate or reduce exposure. So what I'm talking about is when you're dealing with lead gen assets, guys, I almost recommend just only logging in and managing the GMB asset from the original owner account. In other words, when you get a when you set up a new GMB or if you if you're smart and you buy it from us or from another provider, whatever, you're going to get a new Google account or it could be an age account, whatever, it's going to be new to you, a new Google account that is the primary owner of that GMB asset. What I recommend you do is that you use a browser keeper app like Ghost Browser or Browsio. I use Browsio personally. Uh, but use a browser keeper app and open a new project. So like a new browsing instance for that particular Google account, log into it. Even if you bind it to your own IP, you don't even need proxies for this guys. I'm telling you, you don't even need proxies for this. Just log into it through a, Go, a, a browser keeper app like ghost browser or browsio. And now that, that logged in, that, that browsing session will remain logged in no matter what, even when you shut down the application or the software, either one, um, that Google account will still remain logged in. So it's like that It's like that device is always turned on, right? That browser is always on. And so now you just constantly do all of your updates, uh, your optimization, everything through that account. And the reason I say don't manage, I, I'm, I'm recommending not to manage through a manager account for lead gen assets is because that is the, the, the manager account creates a connection between one account and other accounts. Does that make sense? And so I'm saying now, now just to be 100% transparent, I still am using a manager account for location clusters. In other words, if I go to a particular metro area and I find 10 locations that I secured, so I set up 10 different GMB assets for that metro area, which is like a city, right? Um, and, and the suburbs, the surrounding suburbs. If I set up 10 locations, right now I am still testing with being able to manage those through a manager account. Be because I've had manager accounts terminated in the past and it didn't affect the individual GMB accounts because they were owned, I'm using air quotes, but they were prime, they were the primary owner was a separate Google account. So, but what I'm saying is if, if you're just to be clear, Randy, if, if you're dealing with real bona fide businesses, none of this matters. You can just connect to those GMBs through your profile or through any profile really and as a manager and you're perfectly fine because those are all legit businesses like google's not going to punish you or those businesses for managing real live google my business stuff unless you're doing something stupid spammy right and then if you as a manager gets punished it's not going to affect that gmb asset because it's owned by somebody else or a different profile right a manager account can be terminated if an owner account and it excuse me, a manager account can be terminated and it won't affect that GMB. It just basically means that manager can no longer access it because the account was terminated. 
but the GMB is still live and the primary owner account can still access and make edits and blah, blah, blah. Right. So the, the point is you don't ever want to get an owner account terminated. However, with when you're dealing with lead gen assets, which are black hatted assets, guys, they're spammed addresses. Then I recommend not even using a manager account, even though, as I just fully disclaimed, I'm I am still using a manager account. But guys, let us do the testing. <laughs> you know, if I come back in three months and say, by the way, we've got assets that we're managing through a manager account, they're they're black hat assets that are managing through a manager account. We've been dealing with them for months now and they're producing well and we haven't had any termination issues. Then I'll let you guys know. But for right now, I'm telling you, you're probably better off just using a browser keeper app, ghost browser, browsio, one of those or anyone that you choose and just logging in and always doing your optimization work through that primary owner account. It's a little bit of an inconvenience guys, but what's more of an inconvenience having to, go into each individual asset account when you're doing any work in it or losing all of your assets because you left a footprint, which is more inconvenient, right? And you all know the answer to that. So my point is, if it's black hatted stuff, I would recommend that you stay within the individual primary owner Google account anytime you're doing any work. If you're doing work for clients, which are bona fide businesses, then absolutely you're not going to, I don't ever recommend that you ask the client to get their Google account login details. That's silly. Don't do that. That opens you up for liability. If something happens to their Google account, what you would do in those cases for clients is tell them, here's my email account, give them a tutorial that shows them how to go into Google, my business and click on users and add you as a manager. Does that make sense? And then that makes it easy for you to be able to access their locations through your account, make edits to them and do whatever else you need to do. And since they're bona fide businesses, it's as long as you're not, even if you do something really spammy, since you're just a manager, it would affect you and not them. Well, I mean, it might affect their listing, but what I'm saying is if your account got terminated, God forbid, <laughs> I couldn't imagine my Google account being like my primary account being terminated, but if it did, it wouldn't affect my client's businesses, right? It would just remove me, uh, prohibit me from being able to access them. So anyways, I hope that was clear. The last part of that that I want to mention is uh, one thing you don't ever want to do. And I know this because I lost a, a, a cluster of locations at, for Atlanta uh, for tree service stuff just two weeks ago. Um, and that is do not, guys, I'm telling you, do not use GMB location groups. And that's something you'll see where you can actually group locations together in Google My Business. If you go to manage locations, you'll see that there's a location group like drop down and you can create location groups. Um, and but don't do that because I, I started to test that and I lost a whole cluster of uh, sites in Atlanta that were that were 100% fully optimized. So don't do that. So great question. And again, guys, that's what we're here for. Um, you know, I'm not telling you guys don't test stuff on your own. I'm just telling you, uh, you know, we, we do a shit ton of testing here and then we always share the results with you guys to prevent you from losing a bunch of stuff. Right. Great question though. I really like that question because I'm glad that, um, you know, again, if it was unclear to you, it was probably unclear to others and hopefully I clarified it. 